This is the Green Medicine CBD Lounge and Shop in Lauderhill, Florida, which also serves as the medical office of Rastafari neurosurgeon Dr. Anthony Hall. The Roving Roots reporter paid a visit to the office to get Dr. Hall's opinion about the 2020 coronavirus pandemic and to see what he has been doing to help alleviate the medical emergency in South Florida. Now, you're a neurosurgeon and also a pioneer in um, CBD, medical marijuana. Um, it's been said that uh, people of color, African Americans, black people in general, have been affected uh, disproportionately more by this COVID-19 virus. What do you have to say to uh, African people worldwide, to Caribbean people, to Rastafari people who are skeptical of the source of this virus and skeptical about some of the recommended treatments. What would be your advice for people right now? Okay, so there, there is definite evidence in the USA and the UK that black people in both of those regions are affected more than other races. They have a higher death rate, but we don't know if they have a higher infection rate. But it seems that they have a higher death rate when they do get ill. Now, there's also some evidence coming out that possibly the countries that have had BCG vaccination have a lower death rate and infection rate. What is BCG? That's the vaccination that we used to get for tuberculosis in countries like Jamaica, Trinidad, Caribbean, a lot of Africa. So some of those countries have actually a slightly lower death rate. That needs investigation. However, here in the USA, what we're seeing is that the coronavirus and the COVID-19 disease disproportionately affects those who have pre-existing conditions such as diabetes, hypertension, asthma, obesity, sickle cell disease. And those conditions are much more common in the black community because the social determinants of health from the last 200 years have pushed those diseases on us to a greater proportion. So therefore, when a black person gets the disease statistically, they're gonna do worse than a person who's not black. So that's what is driving the high death rate amongst African Americans and African UK, you know, Africans in, in the United Kingdom. We need to look into what's going on in other countries because Jamaica has a low death rate. Most of the Caribbean is a low death rate. Trinidad is a little slightly higher, but there may be other factors keeping the death rate there low as well because, for example, in Jamaica, more people eat uh, and use more natural roots, for example, so their immunity might be a little different. So since the coronavirus and COVID disease attacks your immunity, we need to look into research on that. And what would you recommend to no, people who want to know what can we do to safeguard ourselves? Is there anything we can take? Is what they call social distancing, which I would prefer, prefer to call physical distancing rather than social distancing, is all of this useful, helpful? What's your view? Okay, so we see that the, the virus spreads easily and it can spread in pre-symptomatic and asymptomatic people. So, and it comes out of your mouth and your nose. Is, is that why you are wearing a mask? Because right. the president recommended it, but he says he's not wearing it. But I noticed that you, a medical doctor, are wearing one even without patients at the moment. Right, because if everyone masks up, then the large droplet spread and the small droplet spread that comes from your everyday talking and everyday walking around will be cut down. It won't get into your uh, like easily your, your nose and your mouth as easily. It could still get into your eyes, but if you wear glasses, you uh, protect from that as well, which is why we have the face shields. So masking up cuts down on the spread. Washing your hands cuts down on your self-infection because it's possibly not a problem if you touch a surface that had coronavirus on it. But if you touch your face right afterwards, that's bad. But if you touch a surface or you go outside or you do stuff, be mindful that you need to now um, 
wash your hands before you do things, before you touch yourself, before you touch your face, before you even touch your mask. Like I did a wrong thing now, my mask was falling down because I didn't put the straps up correctly. So I was touching the bottom of my mask. Now that it's up correctly, it's going to stay. So um, those things you need to be aware of. The next thing, you need to build up your immunity. You can use vitamins, herbals, um, cannabis plants, whatever it is. Use immune boosters and immune building. Now we're fortunate in African diaspora that we have knowledge of many, many plants. Many like plants. fever grass? Yeah, I hear a lot of people talking about oh, combinations with fever grass that have been helping people. Well, that's because you know, people picked on the name fever, so they said fever grass. But it, trust me, there are hundreds of immune boosting plants that we have even right here. We can get some of them here in Florida. We can certainly get a lot of them in Jamaica. Guinea hen weed, fever grass, sarsaparilla, cheney root, all those kind of things. You, you can check, you know, the, the libraries of those roots that are down in Jamaica. You need to boost your immunity. You need to suppress bad cells and raise good cells because we have to get the community somehow protected against the coronavirus. The coronavirus is not going to go away. It's going to stay. It's been here for millions of years. It will change because it changes very easily, which is why now we have a so-called novel one. It's a new one, and it, uh, it is going to possibly change again next year. So the, the three protection choices we have. One, we can physically distance from each other. As you said, it's not social distance, it's physical distance, it's two meters away all the time, but we'd have to keep that up forever. Second, we can get immunity through 70 to 80 percent of the population by vaccination. That's what we did with measles, mumps, rubella, tuberculosis, polio. We vaccinated and we got 70 to 80 percent of the population to have the antibodies and immune. Or third, 70 to 80 percent of the population can get infected and then build up your own immunity and get what's called herd immunity. So we have three choices. We're not going to have any other choices. So what are we going to do? Are we going to stay apart from everybody forever for a year or two? No. So we're going to have to do one of the two other things. So but the vaccine is not here yet. And it, for another year at for least, a year right? or so, mm -hmm. at least. And well, the infection is spreading, but it hasn't reached 70 to 80 percent of the population yet. So therefore, we need to cut down on the bad disease. Then you do that by wearing your mask and washing your hands. So are you saying then that maybe this thing still has worse to get before it gets better? We're, 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 this is May 1st we're talking. Uh, a lot of uh, states are opening up around America today and supposedly the worst is over. What's your view on that? Uh, the worst may or may not be over. We don't know. They're guessing. They're playing mathematical modeling. But certainly the disease is not over because it hasn't reached 70 to 80 percent of the population yet. Okay. It's only still at about less than 10. So it's, so it's going to get worse then? No, it's going to continue. It may not necessarily get worse, but it's going to continue. Now that everybody's kind of picking on, except for the, the trumpet, uh, um, everyone's kind of picking on that you got to wear a mask, it, you might see a lower spread. Okay. Now that people are figuring out how to wash their hands, you might see a lower spread. But They should have listened to Mama a long time ago, right? Yeah, but they didn't learn how to wash their hands in elementary school. So we have to teach them 20 seconds soap and water. You know, it's basic, but you got to do it. You got to teach it. So it's going to continue for a lot, lot longer. It's not going away. Coronavirus was there in 2003, was there. 15,000 years ago. Um, we understand that you've been giving out supplies to other doctors in the area um, affected by this COVID-19 pandemic? Yes, we've been giving out to doctors, nursing agencies, nurse registries, community organizations, street teams. Um, yeah, coming through the Florida State Medical Association, the Florida Black Legislative Caucus, uh, the assistance of Becker Law, Yolanda Cash Jackson, as, as well as our local National Medical Association chapters such as the James Sistrunk Medical Society and the James W. Bridges Medical Society. And others in the state of Florida are doing it in other locations as well.
And, and how, how many days have you been doing this? Since when? Uh, we're approaching five, six days now. Uh, and what exactly are you providing? What kind of supplies do you have here? So we're providing like the, the N95 masks. We're also providing these which are level two surgical masks. Uh, some people have been needing gloves. Some people have been needing um, shoe covers. We, we have uh, certain types of face shields. There have been some... These were a box of, uh, of gowns. As you can see, I just gave out a few to a nursing agency that's finished. Uh, we have some spray hand sanitizers as well. So some of the supplies have um, run out, and that's good. That means they're getting into the hands of the nurses and doctors and the staff members that need it. So now they can reopen their practices, start seeing patients again.